prefer almost not quite the same thing uh, with potestate patria. He presses on with what? With his patria potestate. With his father's power. Because Paris is who? Son of Achilles. And so here comes the next generation of Achilles. And he comes through with his father's. And actually, remember we, remember it said irregular noun, we, no genitive, no dative, whim. We, with its force, its violence. It's not just potestate, which is really abstract power. And it's not even potentia, which is actualized power. This is violence. This is violent power. And he presses on with his father's violent uh, power. And um, uh, fit we a we, a way is made with violence. Uh, and uh, uh, Aeneas mentions in 499, he says, you know, he says, we ni ipse for rentem kaide Neoptolemus. I myself saw Neoptolemus raging with kaide. There's a word we should know. Raging with slaughter. I was an eyewitness to this. Uh, and I saw all this kind of stuff, right? Uh, all right. So he's coming through. And, um, and this, this precious, just, just tender scene in 515 and following. Okay? So we're going to look at You got your English Latin there. So what happens? Here's Hecuba. And who's Hecuba? Wife of Priam and her Nati, so and Prophelii, her daughters, they have all fled to the center of the palace, says Virgil through Aeneas, like a bunch of columbi, like a bunch of doves that have been scattered by a storm. And so you see these poor birds that are being driven by a storm into a tree for refuge. And it's like that for these royal women. They, they flee into the very center of the house. And along comes Priam himself. And he starts to pick up in line 518 his Uenolibus armies. Old King Priam. Now, why hasn't he been exiled? Why? He's old. He's past his prime. This is, this is Hector's fight. Hector's dead now, but it's fine. But still, it's, it's young man's fight. But now even old man Priam picks up sumo sumo sumpti sumptus. He picked up his Uenalibus armies, his youthful weapons, the weapons of his youth. These are weapons this guy hasn't used in years, maybe decades. And he starts to get dressed for battle. And his wife says to him, Quae mens tam dira miserabe conjunx impudent his kingi talis. She says, what, what wretched mindset. You know, what's gotten into your head, miserime conjunx, most pitiful husband, that you would, would try to, to get decked out in arms again. Uh, this, 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 this is ridiculous, obviously, at your age. Where are you rushing off to? Uh, she said, if anything could have helped, it would have been Maeus Hector. It would have been my Hector, but not now. Uh, behold, and I gotta be honest, I seriously, I, I, I mean, honestly, I just looked at this probably about half an hour ago on the website. I still honestly cannot believe that I'm reading this right. These lines are not, I'm, I'm actually gonna look at it again. Because I seriously cannot believe that these lines are not a part of They're not. 268 to 297, then big break, then pick it up 559 through 620. I'm reading. You see me reading. I cannot believe it. I'm going on record right here and saying that this is flat dumb. You hear me? I'm talking to you, AP. Leave out these incredible lines. These are when you see these lines, you'll you'll see what I mean. Okay. Now, line 520, that's funny. Line 526, behold, eke autem elapsus piri de caide polites unus naturum primi. Here comes a fellow named Polites, who is unus, one of the filiorum or naturum primi. Son of one of the sons of Priam. This guy comes tearing around a corner, running away from the caide piri, from the slaughter of Pyrrhus. 
And Aeneas saw this. And so here comes the one guy who's chasing this other dude, and one guy's fleeing. And Pyrrhus is pressing on in 530. Yam, yam, quae manu, tenet, et premit hasta. And now, and now, notice the repetition of yam. And now, and now, he grabs him with his manu. Yeah. And he premit him with his hasta. He stabs him with his spear. And hosta is a spear. So you may have the hosta plant in front of your house. It's kind of a bush. It's got spear-like stalks. Thank you. Okay. And the kid, right there, ante oculos, before the eyes, and the aura parentum. For the eyes and the aura and the faces of his parents, he fooded his wheatam. Fundo fundera fudifusis. We've had it several times. Yeah. Poured, and poured out his life. Cum muto sangue. With much blood. Pyrrhus kills this kid right in front of old King Priam and Hecuba. It's their son, and he kills him right. And it, this, is a, this is a war. This guy isn't fighting him. This guy's running away from him. I mean, they, 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 you can talk all day about the difference between war and murder, but I think almost anybody would certainly conclude this is murder. He murders this kid right in front of his parents' eyes. How old is he? Uh, it's unclear. It's unclear. The fact that he's not out fighting suggests maybe a little bit younger. Now, I don't think we're talking like five-year-olds or something like that, but, yeah, but, 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 a, but a kid, perhaps. Okay. And King Priam, King Priam, he did not spare his woki, he did not spare his iri, it says in line 533. Anger. He didn't spare his anger and he didn't spare his voice. He's going to give Pyrrhus uh, a tongue lashing because that's about all he can do. You're going to give him a good talking to. And he says, for your crime... You know, basically may the gods uh, punish you. Uh, but then in line 540, this is one of these great things. You remember, okay, remember in second year when we read uh, the translation, we read Alcestis, the play by Euripides. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and of course, a couple of you weren't here for that. But you remember when Admetus, the king, who was getting his wife to die for him, yeah. had this vicious argument with his father. And they said the most hurtful things that a man and son could possibly say to each other, especially in that culture. Remember what they said to each other? No. Okay, I disown you. You're not my son. And the son says, you're not my father. Somebody else will bury you because it ain't going to be me. Because you don't even have a son. And that's the most hurtful thing that you could possibly say, especially to a, a father and son. Because I mean, they're a whole patronymic thing, right? That, that is so important. And Priam hits... A kid, or hits Pierce with the worst that he can say. And he says in line 540, he says, You mentiras, you lie that you were born from Achilles. Because Achilles wouldn't have done something like this. Now, here's that's the sad and pathetic thing. The fact is, Achilles did do something like this. Well, Achilles was absolutely as savage as Pierce. I mean, he dragged the body of Hector around. But well, in the sorry. moment, this seems worse, and this is what he's going to hit him with. It's a different thing. It was like the, the best warrior that, that the Trojans had, and it was like the king show off a trophy. Well, now, now okay, again. Like someone that's running away. That's a very good point. Yeah, it is also a very good point. There is somewhat of a difference. Now, I think everybody, everybody's always read this, and I think Homer intended that Achilles was going too far in dragging Hector around. That was going too far to defile the body. Yet, I think, John, you're exactly right. He was showing off his trophy, basically, and this is very different. And Pyrrhus replies to old King Priam, Referes ergo haec et nuntius ibis pelidae genitori. He says, you will referes, re plus pharaoh. Mm -hmm. You will, what's pharaoh? Make. No, I was talking about oh, yeah. You oh, will bring, you right. will bring or you will take re, Back. You will take back these words, not as in you will retract them, but you will take them back to my genitori, synonym for patri, my father. You will go as a nuntius 
to my father, as a messenger to my father. Now, Achilles at this point is dead. So what does he say? Okay. Right. You can go tell my father. You think I'm such a bad? Go tell him yourself. Because you're about to die. <laughs> now, you want to talk about just stone cold. Uh, he says, and be sure you memento, remember to tell him <coughs> how degenerate Neoptolemo, how degenerate Neoptolemo says, you tell him what a worthless person I am. Nunc morera. Now die. die. Two words. Nunc mora. Now die. And saying this, die. He trucks it. He dragged Priam, trementem, trembling, and lapsantem, slipping through multo sanguine of his nati. He dragged him, slipping through the blood of his own son, up to the altaria. And he wound up his coma, and he wound up his hair with his left hand, and with his dextra, with his right, he plunged his ensem, synonym for gladium, his sword, up to the hilt. That's the end of Priam, King of Troy. Now you see why I like this passage? Yeah, you see why well, AP's yeah. stupid for cutting this out? I mean, this is, so a, dumb. I mean this, is a, this is a powerful passage. Powerful passage. This is the and stuff it, I signed up for. This, this is what I know. That's right. That's and, 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 look, and look at and look at how look at how uh, the, the character of, of Aeneas ends this part of the story in 550, uh, 7 and 8. Talking about what happened to Priam's body, his truncus, like it sounds. His trunk. That's just this part, minus this part. His trunk lies on the litera, which is a shore. His caput, having been a wolsum from the umaris, I mean, ripped off from the umaris, from the shoulders. And this is the absolute, again, if you think about all the stuff about dignity, you think about the stuff of of what life everlasting really means and memory and all that kind of stuff. A corpus sine nomine. A body without a name. There's nobody to recognize what this corpse is, nobody to give it a proper burial, nobody to say, yeah, this once was. Nothing. And that's where you pick it up now in 558. Ad me, tum primum sai was kirkum stated horror. Then a silent horror, cruel shuddering, cruel shuddering Kirkham stated me, surrounded. surrounded me. I am stiffened. I, I, I stood agape, right? I stood amazed, dazed, dazed and confused for so long. It's not true. Horrible movie. Not talking about the movie. Yes. Referring to the oh, song, yeah, no. the song, song is great. The song, right? That's, that's that's one one. That's the was it Devil One or Devil One? Was it Devil One or Devil Two? They used to confuse them too. You're right. No, no, it's Devil One. It's Devil One. Yes. Yeah. You're yeah. thinking yeah. a whole lot, love. Oh, see, yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> okay. No, actually, I was thinking about the album covers. <laughs> I was thinking which picture. Well, one's no. like an explosion. Right, right. right. It's exploding. Yeah, it's the Devil One. Yeah. And what a woman never bargained for you. Lots of people talking, and the, the thing is, I can't sing that song anymore. Because honestly, I, I gotta be honest. I liked, I used to like the music. I really did. Mm -hmm. But I gotta be honest. I get to that song, and I get to that lyric, and I, I in you know, all honesty, I can't sing. I won't. Because I don't, because I don't believe it. Well, the, earth, what? the soul of a woman was not created for love. It is. It is. Inc I realize it's from the perspective of a guy whose heart has been broken. And he hates women. I get that. But the bottom line is I can't sing along with songs that I fundamentally don't agree with. Can't sing. Well, it is. It is. And um, I remember the day I was, I, was, I, mean, I was listening to radio, I was listening to Jimi Hendrix, uh, Hey Joe, classic rock song. That's a good song. It is. I love it. I'm going, yeah, yeah, hey Joe, like, where you going with that gun in your hand? Support, da, 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 da. Yeah. I'm going, this is great. Going down to shoot my old lady. Got her messing around with another man. Da, 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 da. And I'm going, wait a minute. That is not my story. <laughs> that is not like not my story. It's not the story of anybody I know. 
And I'm thinking, no matter how much I really like the tune, I'm like, man, I can't. I just can't. Can't relate. Really. I just, I can't, well, it's not, I just can't relate. I can't. I can't sing. I, I won't uh, because I fundamentally disagree with this. Anyway, you would be an awful bard, man. Like, Poe's <laughs> writes really nice things, and then you, would, I can't sing this. It's not my story to tell. Well, you know, I, you know, I, just, <laughs> I, I realize that. But you know, there are actors who will refuse to play some roles. I mean, because they just fundamentally disagree with you. Uh, whatever it is, you know. They need money. And, uh, well, okay. Money. money didn't justify everything. Okay, he said, I stood again. I stood again, but couldn't believe it. Sumit kari genitoris imago. Ud regia mai kwai wum. Crudeli wumra vidi. Litam exhalantem. The imago. Yeah, the image. I'd take, it, I'd take that one for the derivative if you could work it. The image of my kari genitoris, synonym for patris. My, uh, my dear father, subit. Uh, right. Um, came, up. came up. Came up. Now, Dad's not dead yet. Okay, Dad is back at home. Remember when we left? He fled his dad's house. Went out into the night and was fighting so forth, but now he's got this image of his dad. This image of his dad appears. So he's not dead yet. The image of his dad appeared. Ut regia my quaiwum, crudeli vulnera vitam exhalantum. And he says, and he says, as as I, a weedy, I, I, I saw him as one who was I quaiwum regum. Equal age to the king. Suddenly, I mean, I've just watched the horrible slaughter of Priam. And then I got this image of his dad. And I realized that they're about the same age. And I, and, and I saw him as if exhalantem his wheatong from a crudeli woman. Suddenly, I could just imagine my dad dying the same way to Priam just. And I gotta be honest again, unless you at least you gotta read that passage in English, because that the next passage doesn't make any sense. All right, and you've got to have read what came before this, because that doesn't make any sense. He has just watched what happened to Prime, and now he imagines, oh my gosh. What if there's some soldiers that have gotten back home? What if they're they're doing to my dad right this so I have to Priam? And then Subi deserta creusa et derepta domus et parvi casus yuli. And then what else? Subit, same word, subit. Something else came up to mind. Deserted creusa. Oh my gosh. Thinking about dad, and now all of a sudden I'm thinking about whom? His wife, creusa, left alone. The, the domus derepta. The house plundered, and the casus of Parvi Yuli. Casus. Uh, All right, comes from a small. Here's the thing. What are we doing for casus? I see chance. Okay. This is one where I really think it helps to know uh, the, the etymology of the word. Cado cadera. Mm. Kikiri casus. All right. Love that. Now, this one gives us the root of deciduous. And I've talked about this for years. Deciduous trees are trees whose leaves fall. Kado means to fall. Or to cut down. Then, by extension, from that fourth part, you get this noun, casus, is literally that which befalls you. And so, therefore, casus can mean chance, random chance, whatever just happens, a happening. Uh, it can sometimes mean outcome. Uh, so it's kind of all that. Suddenly, I start thinking about what, basically what could happen to Parwi Yuli, to little Yulis. Oh my gosh, I start thinking about all that stuff. Respicio, equi sit me circum copia lustro. I look back, look back over my shoulders. At quae sit me circum copia lustro, and I cope I lustro, I survey. I'm doing a kid count here. I'm checking out. I survey 
Quot copia sit me circum. Now, what, yeah, co copia, remember in a military sense, copia usually means what? Alive. Troops or forces. So basically I, I look back and I kind of look around and I see how many troops I've got around me. What, what copia, what supply of men sit circum me? By the way, parse sit. Yeah, who gives me? I look around and see who's around me. Parse sit. Parse it, yeah. Person number tense and mood, voice doesn't apply oh, oh, to a verb like this. Okay. Parse it, sit. Third singular. I, I thought you meant What's that? Third, 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 third singular, good. I thought you meant the verb is parse it. Like, P. Um, oh, no. Nah. That's what it sounded like. I did, I realized. I said it spoke too fast. The third singular, we've identified that. Um, what else did you do? Oh, is it Perfect. Minimum. Minimum. <laughs> this one word can translate the title of a famous Beatles song. Oh, oh let it. Mm -hmm. Oh, let it be. Oh, it's an so therefore, oh, oh, oh. Uh, what's that called? Purpose. Well, but it's, it's not subjunctive. Tense. It's yeah, subjunctive. Third singular subjunctive. Let's get a tense. Purpose. Present. Good job. Third singular present subjunctive. Wait, what? What? Like From song. Oh, is it? Oh, it's that thing, and it's like the word plus sin. Oh, I remember that. It's just, yeah. no, it's just sim, sim, sim. I remember that. It's just the present subjective of sum, that's all. Exactly. But then I had to ask that question because then I asked the real question why? Why is there a subjunctive verb here? Oh, no. Nope. Is it a independent? Oh, it's an indirect question. Indirect question! There it is. <laughs> The direct question is, what troops are around me? Indirectly, I look around, I survey what troops are around me, okay? And lo and behold, omnes defesi de seruera. All defesi, all being tired, have de seruera. Have forsaken, they've all left me, everybody's left. I look around. Of course, he's been caught up in watching all this stuff go down at Brian's Palace and, and having his moment thinking about his dad. And he says, hey, guys. Guys? Hello? Anybody? No? Uh, and there's nobody there. Had corporate assault you on terra misera out ignibus agra de deo. Not only are they exhausted, worn out, left them. But some have misera, their corpora ad terum. Sent from the they have earth. sent their corpora to the terum. Um, sent their bodies to the ground. Sent their bodies to the ground with a salt tube. With a jump. Oh. These guys were up on the walls. Some of these guys have clearly committed suicide. They've just jumped off the walls. Or, or, they have the deira imply their igra imply corpora again. Gave their bodies. They have given their igra bodies, their, their weary bodies to the ignibus. To the fires. These guys did not have it in them to continue with this horror, and they just chose to end it. Hors de seruera, misera, and de deira. Parse one, you parse them all. Dodge a wrench, you I dodge them all. Uh, that's that's oh, it's their syncopation. Plural, plural. Third. third. Indicative. Indicative. Perfect. 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 Third plural, perfect, indicative. Active or passive. Active. 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 Third plural, perfect, indicative, active. active. Now, the fact is, if you look at all of them, they're actually all coming from third parts. The one I would say would be the trickiest is misera. Okay? Take a look at this. You've got adjectives like misera. You might be thinking, oh, this is some form of wretched. And indeed, wretched is in there. Igra is in there. So you might be thinking, so that's not. It's from mito, mitera, nisi. And there's your third part. So miserums becomes misera. Okay? 
This third floor perfect and take it back. Very good. Now, here's the thing. We got a weirdness here. And and I want to pause for a moment. I'm, the camera can still roll, but we got a weird little a weird little deal. And I'm just curious to see if what you doing? Um, I have no answer to my. Mm. I don't have an answer to my question. I posted it up. The next chunk of lines are what we call spurious lines. Spurious. Well, not that they ain't finished. Ain't authentic. Oh, Whoa, copy yet? No, somebody oh. else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It says it in the book somewhere here. Like well, I was looking for to see if your book mentioned it. I don't see. Does it your does. book? It yeah. says the oh, best yeah. manuscripts of oh, there do yeah. not have these lines, and many scholars consider the passage to be spurious as they yeah. are inconsistent with um, the six. Book six, lines four ninety four to five thirty, five sixty seven to five eighty eight. So this next big chunk of lines, and really the rest of what should have been your homework there. Um, we're not really sure that Virgil wrote these lines. In fact, most scholars think he didn't. There's, there's textual evidence to suggest that these lines are bogus. Uh, and I was very surprised, and that's why I've been checking all day. It's like one of these, you know, rub my eyes, I can't believe what I'm seeing. I couldn't believe that AP really had cut out such famous stuff that we've read for years, and had put in, put in a passage that everybody considers spurious. Uh, and yet it appears they have. Um, so it's, it's weird. What it is, and we'll, we'll, we'll go through it, he sees Helen. Aeneas sees Helen. And she's kind of skulking along and hiding. And one of the reasons people think these lines are spurious, if you go over and look at 6, 494 to 530, there's another reference by a later character to Helen on the last night of Troy. And in that part, the character talks about her letting in the Greeks, playing a fairly major role, and that seems inconsistent with this passage of her skulking along and hiding from both Greeks and Trojans, because he says it very explicitly, she's hiding from both Greeks and Trojans. So it does seem a little bit spurious. Uh, I'm not quite sure what to make of it. Um, in terms of the poem, I'm not sure what to make of it. I'm certainly not sure what to make of it regarding AP. Yes? Could it be possible that, like, Virgil asked someone to do it for him. It's like he was like the whole like, I don't want an unfinished book. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be honest. Pretty, I, was I, was I'm not sure where these lines first appeared. I don't think he had the ability to. Maybe she was guilty. Really. Like feeling really guilty <laughs> about letting him in. And was, uh, it's not impossible. And and I'll be honest, I had not quite realized that, that we were going to be doing this. I'm going to have to to get into this a little bit. Really I'm going to get into this, and I may make this a humongous extra credit opportunity. I haven't said it yet. First of all, I'm not sure when in the history of this work these lines first appear. Um, they don't appear in the earliest manuscripts. And let's see here. This is Oxford. Oxford says, um, They were not included by a couple of the earliest editors, fellows named Tuca and Barrios, uh, who edited right after Virgil's death. Uh, they were not included. Um, they are preserved among a few Virgilian manuscripts. Um, the editors put them into this text from, oh, an edition of 1473. Um, Whoa, wait, so addition to the ones that... So there, there, there was a, a, a manuscript from 1473 oh, oh, apparently is the source for these lines, and they have regularly been included. Uh, but why that is... In Latin they were written? Mm-hmm. This seems like totally fake. I don't know why they would include why would somebody do this? No, like I'm going to have to get into that. I'm going to have to get into that. Like, what if um, those were the original time. lines and the rest of the story was built around them? Wow. Now that's <laughs> I'm out. I'm too smart for this class. 
Because you've lost the over there. I'm trying to, I'm immediately trying to see, is there some kind of a really cool historical novel that can be wound around that thesis? No. Uh, no, no not a single one. I wouldn't read it. Well, there might, there might be. I write, a, I write a couple of books like that, and I'm like, whoa, at like one time. You, you tempt me. You tempt me to savage. Maybe if, if you can do it, right? I would read it, but I don't think you could. Anyway, I have a question. Who did, <laughs> Helen, who, did, who did Helen marry after the fall of Troy? Was it a Greek or a Trojan? At fall Troy, she went back home with Menelaus, oh. her husband. Okay. They spent the rest of their lives uh, drugged Stoned. out. Stoned, yeah. A drug called Nepenthe to forget with all the pain their of their lives. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so, yeah, that's amazing. Um, seems how we have like two like passages that contradict each other. Yeah. Um, I keep going back to never remember what time. I don't understand what you're talking about. So, like, I'm hung up on that. Like, oh, they don't have to do Yeah, they do. Oh, well, oh, like, if we say that they do, then how do we know that this is the one that seems. Like why would, he, why would she be hiding? Well, apparently because it, it appears and it doesn't appear in the earlier manuscripts. But my question is, how does this conflict with the other one? Like, because this why would she be hiding, hiding from the people that she let in? Well, she's so guilty. She's like, oh, this horror. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I think, I think there's something to what you say. And my hunch is, if I go on Jay's store, um, oh, the scholarly yeah. thing. I'm going to look up some articles. I bet you there are some people who have defended them as legitimate, and, and probably have said something along the lines of what you're saying. That's not inconsistent. Uh, I think the more damaging thing is that it doesn't appear in the earliest manuscripts. Um, the earliest isn't always the best, but um, you know you got to figure it's closer to the time. You, you tend to go back to that. So um, we're going to pause there. Um, just cause. She just could. And, um, I'm pretty, like, disappointed in AP. Hey, make you shut the camera off, please.